Hi everyone, this is Richard. Let's start learning to program. First, we want to go through the basic structure of a program in Dart. Let's go on File, New Project. Let's just type Begin. Command Line Application. We'll go over these other templ templates in the future. And this is our program. I'm going to delete Void for right now. We're not going to need it. We will in the future. That's for another talk. All programs begin with main. It's just where everything begins, no matter where it is. Some programs begin from the top down. The, no matter where the main is, where it's in the top of the program, bottom of the, of the program, that's where it begins. Open parentheses, close parentheses, no spaces in between here. Then there is a bracket. Open bracket, curly bracket, close curly bracket. This basically tells the program, start at main, perform whatever you see right inside here from top to bottom. Print is basically its command. It's what you tell the computer to actually do. Um, it's also called a function. So function, or for, we can always call it a command, um, we'll define that in the future itself. Basically it's telling the computer what to do with what you have in the parentheses. And this is in here, this is called the argument. So argument is in the parentheses, ended by a semicolon. Always ends all lines with a semicolon. If you don't end it with a semicolon, remember, Dart Editor helps you out. Expect it to find a semicolon. It'll give you an error. And it'll basically tell you to fix it, because if you don't fix it, let's try to see what happens. I'm not fixing it anyway. It doesn't actually run. Unlike an editor in real life, the reader probably will understand if the passage is just horribly written, most likely, but not with computers. You have to be very, very precise. You can have other lines. And you can have numbers, okay? Always end with a semicolon. Hello world, number 33, right? You don't actually have to limit what you put inside of there. You could put a float, right? So it'll print that as well. Pretty much anything inside of here. You can even put, turn the 33 into a string. So it's no longer an integer, it's now a string and it'll print it out just the same. But remember, the computer sees it a little bit differently, so it sees it as a string and not an integer. Few things. Comments. So basically, whenever you put two forward slashes, this is a comment. The computer does not acknowledge this at all. It's basically for you. It's basically a note to self. Many times people, on the same line will say, what is the output? And we'll type that there. So you know that when you have this line, the output will be like this. And that's just basically um, what most people do. There is also a multi-line comment. So slash asterisk, and you can have asterisk, and there's no space, slash. And this is a multi-line comment. This is if you have something to really say that's a long, and you could just go on and on, but please don't, okay? Because remember, if you type it, somebody is going to probably have to read it. And if you just go on pages and pages of something, this is not the place to do it. Be Try, try to be really concise on this, okay? Because <laughs> I think people will appreciate it, and people sometimes get really upset when you just keep going on and on, kind of like I'm doing right now. Anyway, a few other things. Formatting. Remember I said semicolon after every single line? You don't actually have to make a new line literally. The computer knows after the semicolon, make a new line. So it basically does the same thing. However, it's harder to read. What you can do is right click, go under format, and the computer will do the best job of formatting it for you. It's a pretty nice trick. It doesn't work all the time. If your syntax is a little bit off and you try to format right here, it'll, it won't know what you're trying to do, so it won't do a very good job. So you have to have the correct syntax or the st correct structure here, and then it'll help you out. That's pretty nice. Then we also have auto-completion. I'm just going to go over some of the features, the basic features of the Dart editor before we start jumping immediately into programming itself. So there's auto-completion, remember? So that would be control, 
plus plus space. Okay, so for example, you're typing print, but you can't really remember how to spell print. So you can do control space. And print is right there. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. It's the object. And let me just say I'm going to print pi object and tell the user that the result is high object. Let's comment these out so we don't see that in the output, so the computer no longer acknowledges it exists. So it should only read this, and this should be the output. High object. Okay? Um, by the way, th like I said, this is an argument, but many times you put in, the, in this argument, you put an object, a thing. What do you put in here? It's a thing, an object. And the thing is called an argument. Now, the reason why I'm talking like this is you don't have to put an object there. You could put other things inside of here itself. You could perform, put a, um, um, a, a function. You, you could put different things inside. We'll go over that in the future itself. But that's why I, I just want to explain why it said object. What the heck is an object? And it's basically just a thing that you put inside of there. But it's still called an argument. Okay. So that's basically the, um, um, the Dart editor fundamental structure or syntax. Next, we'll go over variables. Thanks.